Here we have Hugging Face Star Coder, which is surprisingly more interesting than I even originally thought, and I was very interested in it. What I'm going to do is walk you through first what it does. So it's a model that is similar to other generative AI models for coding, like Copilot, for example, uh, but it's completely open source, and you can see here it has 15.5 uh, billion parameters. It was trained on 80 programming languages from the stack here. So pretty exciting. And if you look at the mission here as well, it's an open scientific collaboration for code LLMs. And you can work on it as an AI researcher. Let's say you're working in the university system. This would be an interesting thing to do. So the goal here is that they're going to release data sets, models, experiments, so that it's democratizing the generative AI revolution, not just putting it in the hands of venture capitalists. So if we go ahead and look at this star coder base here, 1B, this is a smaller version of it, but it works very well with Hugging Face Candle. Here you can see that Hugging Face Candle, a Rust-based uh, minimalist uh, ML inference project, can run star coder. So you can see here, this is a specialized LLM for code generation, and it's pretty straightforward to uh, authenticate with once you've got the initial uh, Hugging Face tool installed. So again, if we go over to one of the demo projects I have, I have the information right here, pip install Hugging Face Hub, and then do uh, a login. So if I go over to my uh, code spaces environment, uh, I can actually see this in action, uh, Hugging Face CLI, and I said, who am I? It shows that I'm actually authenticated and I can actually use this project. But because I'm going to do something on a very uh, intensive uh, GPU, it's going to uh, require something a little bit beefier. I'm going to move over to a remote Visual Studio Code environment that's running a, a G5, which is a, a new generation GPU from AWS. So if we go over to this environment, you can see here I'm doing a remote session here. And then uh, we can again verify what's happening. So I can type in hugging uh, face uh, CLI, who am I? There we go, we see that I'm logged in. Now, in order to run this thing, uh, what's kind of nice about this is that if I wanted to, I can open up a second window and paste it above, and I could see how much GPU is actually being saturated. In fact, I can even open up another shell here and do HTOP, and you can see here, whoa, look at this. We have you know 64 cores. This is a this is a big machine. And then if I wanted to, I could also do NVIDIA SMI dash L1 to loop and check out the GPU. Now that I got that cooking, I can just run the command that will actually uh, allow me to to basically test this out. So let's go ahead and walk through step by step what's actually happening. So I do cargo run. And this is a typical command uh, that you would do to execute something in a uh, project. Now notice I'm saying features CUDA, and I'll get back to this in a second. So what this means is that I'm using the CUDA drivers that are already installed on this AWS Deep Learning Base AMI. I'm passing it in the big code example. So this was the Hugging Face project earlier. I'm then also passing in the prompts. In this case, this would be a Rust function that adds two numbers. Now, one thing I'm going to show you is that, in fact, if we want to get optimized performance, because the CUDA in in drivers are installed, it's it's a version of CUDA that's optimized for working with neural networks. So we actually want to use that to speed it up even further. So if I'm going to be using this all the time as a coding assistant, why not? Let's go ahead and use the most optimized approach possible. So I'm going to say, look, I need to find a Rust function that adds two numbers. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. And you can see this thing in action and watch this. You'll see the GPU getting triggered right here. And then we'll get a result that tells us a Rust uh, hint on how to build a function in Rust that adds two numbers. There we go. We see uh, saturating the, the GPU here. Now let's go ahead and, and switch it. And let's say Python function that adds two numbers. And you can see here that it's going to go through uh, again, give us another suggestion here. Uh, and we could say Ruby function that adds two numbers.
And if we wanted to even time this, you can see that it retrieved the files uh, in microseconds here, I think, and then loaded the model in about two seconds, and then it started the inference uh, loop. So really the, the amount of time that it took to load the model seems like it's the, the bottleneck here, which is still not that bad to, to pull in that model, uh, but it's able to give us uh, pretty reasonable suggestions here based on this. And, and we could, uh, again, keep going through here and doing JavaScript, uh, for example, so this has a lot of promise, I think, for people that are interested in, you know, really doing their own open source uh, uh, coding assistance. And you can see here pretty straightforward, actually, because of the power of Rust and also the Hugging Face ecosystem.